What's up, guys? Welcome to Unite Community Church. Uh, if you are brand new, you are in for a treat because we are wrapping up this series called Turn On Your Brain. Now, if you've missed any of the series, I'm telling you, go back and listen to it. Uh, it is well worth your time because this whole series has been about mental health, but really the question that we started with, okay, is the question I want to end with, and it's simply this. Are you thinking about what you're thinking about? Think about that, right? A lot of think words, okay? But thinking about what you're thinking about because your life, my life, what have we been learning? Okay, that our lives are moving in the direction of our strongest thoughts. And today, what I want to do is I want to lift the bar to a place where whatever you're thinking about, whatever your thoughts are, whether positive, whether negative, whatever they are, here's what I want to do is I want to teach us how to rise above this little thing called worry. All right, and what we're going to do and why I'm so excited about this week is that what we're going to do is we're going to challenge you to worship. Now, hang tight because whenever you say a word like that, okay, depending on whatever your background is, that puts an image in your mind, okay? Like maybe you're here and you're new to the church experience or maybe you didn't grow up in church. You hear worship and you might think this, right? We're not worthy. We're 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 not not worthy. worthy. We're not worthy, right? Right? Like worship is that kind of a word. It's kind of like, now I'm like worship, right? It might be a little bit weird to you. Now maybe you grew up in church, right? And your idea is worship is boom, music. I know what worship is. Worship is when they go to church, whether it was a piano player, whether it was an organ, whether it was a band, worship is music, right? Or maybe, maybe you're here and you're like, oh, they're all wrong. I know what worship is. Worship is a lifestyle, right? And there's the super Christian. You know, they're like, I have Jesus in me. Jesus is, I'm thankful for Jesus for everything. And so my life, my lifestyle, everything I do from thoughts to actions to deeds is going to be worship, right? And, and now listen to me, listen to me. Wherever you're at on the map, okay? You're the we're not worthy person, right? Or, or you're the lifestyle person, or the music person, it doesn't matter where you're at on the spectrum, here's what I want you to know, you're all kind of right. So what I want to do today, okay, again, and today's going to be short because what I want to challenge you to do is actually worship at the end of this, okay? But what I want to do is just give a little mini lesson on worship, where if I could define worship for you, I think the best way for us to understand it, okay, it doesn't matter if you're the church person, not church person, to fully define worship, I think it's simply this. Worship is responding to what's already been done. Okay, so think about our kind of three types of people we talked about already, right? The Wayne's World people, right? We're not worthy, right? You're responding. The point of that, you're responding to a person or the person's success or who they are where you're like, ah, I'm going to bow down and worship you, right? Maybe you're the music person, right? The music flips up. Boom, the songs, the lyrics, you're in church, you're worshiping what's already been done. The music's going, Jesus is alive, we're going to worship, or the lifestyle people, right? Like, I'm going to live a life of worship. What does that even mean? It means that your life is going to reflect the finished work of on the cross, right? Like Jesus did live, Jesus did die, Jesus did raise his life back up again. He put his spirit in you and therefore you are going to live a life responding to his love in your life and you're going to live a life of worship. Right now, 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 wherever you're at on the map, okay, I want you to know worship is a response. It's a response to what's been done. And now you're thinking, okay, hang on. This is a mental health series. Thank you, Pastor P for the little mini lesson on worship. But what does this have to do with my mind, let alone worry? And here's what I would argue. Everything. Like this thought, worship, has everything to do with worry and especially the anxious thoughts that come in our mind, right? And think about this. And and this is what I'm learning. What I've learned through this series, okay, is that there are external factors that we can't control. 
Like, like you're not as in control as you think you are. Like you're not. And where this really hit me was when our family got COVID in the middle of this series. Okay. Like, like seriously, like, like I did not ask for that. I had no control. Listen to me. When I was in bed, okay, literally sleep, I slept for three days and then the next like five days I was like fatigued and could barely do anything. Okay. Like literally I didn't ask for that. When my wife got COVID and she slept for days, we didn't ask for that. Right. In fact, in fact, the launch of the new year. Okay. Let's be on the very first Sunday of 2022. We had a big snowstorm. Okay. As I'm getting in my car to drive to our Wyandotte campus. Okay. That's like a 45 minute drive for me. Okay. But because we had like four or five inches of snow that night. Okay. As I'm driving an hour and a half in, Okay, and I watch, literally, I'm watching car after car after car, all on the side of the road, and then literally, I'm on a two-lane road, just vroom, 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 right? And I'm, I, I had this thought, I'm not safe. I had this thought, they could slip, my car could slip. Listen to me, we are not as in control as we think we are, and that's the problem with life, right? Especially when we think about this thing called worry. There are so many things that are out of our control and what do we do to respond to those moments, right? Like what do we do? And what I want you to focus, I want to challenge you on to do is in the what if moments. Like if you're plagued with anxious thoughts about what if I lose my job? What if my relationship goes south? What if I get sick. What if, right? Like that mentality, but also on the flip side, maybe it did happen. Like you did get sick. You are dealing with the death of a family. You did lose your job. You are in debt into your, up to your ears. Maybe you did make a mistake or a sin that is affecting you greatly. What do we do in those moments? What I want to do is give you the big idea, the big thought, everything we're going to talk about for the rest of our morning. And I'm going to challenge you to worship at the end of today. And it's simply this. Here's our big thought is that worship. Okay. Worship overtakes worry every time. Worship overtakes worry every time. I want you to say that with me. Worship overtakes worry every time. Time. So whatever your thoughts are, here's what I want you to do is that biblically, what we're called to do in our worry moments is worship. And what I want to do for the rest of our time is I'm going to walk through a story in the Old Testament. Okay. And what I want you to see is that when we worship, what it does is it activates our faith, it activates God's movement, and it really does subdue whatever worries you have in your life. And so if you have your Bibles, we're going to be in 2 Chronicles chapter 20. Anyway, we're just going to kind of read this story and we're going to see if we can relate to what's going on in here. Okay, at this point, okay, you got to understand that God had set his people, the Israelites, free. Okay, what, what you need to know about that is essentially God had a promised land. Okay, so we have uh, Moses, you got the 10 plagues, God did that. Okay, you got the parting of the Red Sea. God did that, okay? But then their very first battle, okay? They walk around the city of this of Jericho, okay? And they just walk around seven times on seven days. The seventh day, they do seven more times. And then they all praise God and boom, the walls come crumbling down, okay? Like that's Israel's history. But at this point, they're in the promised land. They built their city. Like David has come and gone. Solomon come and gone. Okay, the greatness has kind of come and gone. And now their enemies are pressing in on them. And that's where we're going to jump in. In 2 Chronicles chapter 20, it says this. After this, the Moabites and the Ammonites with some of the Menunites came to wage war against Jehoshaphat. Now, Jehoshaphat was one of Israel's kings, okay? So, watch this. Some people came and told Jehoshaphat, a vast army is coming against you from Edom from the other side of the Dead Sea. It is already in Hazan Tamara, okay? That is En Gedi, okay? So, essentially, they're close, okay? Like, this huge army is coming after us, and they're, like, here, okay? Does that make sense? Alarmed, no duh, 
Jehoshaphat resolved to inquire of the Lord, and he proclaimed the fast for all of Judah. And the people of Judah came together to seek help from the Lord. Indeed, they came from every town in Judah to seek him. Now, time out. In the midst of tragedy, what we've learned in this series, right, is when your back is up against the wall, you go to God. You pray and you pray some more. And when you're sick of praying, you pray and you pray and you pray and you pray and you pray some more and you pray some more and you pray some more. Okay. And so that's what these guys are doing. Okay. They're like, God, you got to help. God, you need to intervene, right? Think about tragedies in your life. When your back is up against the wall, the worry, the what if moments, right? We pray, we pray, we pray, we pray, we pray. But very practically, what do you do after the prayer or through the prayer, right? Because we can't lock ourselves in our rooms and just pray, right? Like what's, what do we do beyond that? And that's why we're going to come back to this because very practically, King Joe, he engages with God and says this, all the men of Judah with their wives and children and little ones stood before the Lord. Watch this. Then the spirit of the Lord came on Jehaziel. He said, and watch this, listen, King Josephat and all those who live in Judah and Jerusalem, this is what the Lord says to you. Okay, now pay attention because this is God responding to the prayer. Okay, do not be afraid or discouraged because of this vast army or whatever. Well, in other words, what's he saying? Don't worry, right? Because why? Worship trumps worry every time, right? But where, where does that come from? Watch this. Keep going. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged because of this vast army for the battle is not yours, but God's. Now hang tight. Whose battle is it? It's God's. Whose battle is it? Is it your battle? No, it's God's. Whose battle is it? According to this text, it's God's battle. And so think about that. Next time that you're sick, next time that you are in fear and worry, next time that you have your anxious thoughts coming against you, maybe next time you lose a job, next time you lose a relationship, the next time your back is up against the wall, understand that whatever you're dealing with, if you're a Christian, understand that that battle is God's battle. So if it's cancer, listen to me, it's God's cancer. If it's your finances, listen to me, let God deal with the finances. Listen, but whatever it is, when your back is up against the wall, understand it's not your battle, it's God's battle. But what do we do in the meantime? Right? Like, what do we do? Because it's fine to know that mentally, but how do we fill our minds up with something that gives us enough fight to enter into the battle? What do we do? What do we do? What we're going to learn is we worship. We worship because worship moves us out of worry. Worship responds to what God's acts are already doing. And worship puts our minds in a place to give the battle to God. Understand, understand, just keep tracking with this. As we keep going in the story, early in the morning, they left for the desert of Tekoa. Okay. Then as they set out, okay, so they're going to go meet the army. Think about that. So the army's on their back door. The vast army, right, is bigger than they can handle. It's more than they can ever understand or even take out. Okay. It's a vast army that they can't even see the end of. Think of that. Yet these guys are like, you know what? We're going to go after them. We're going to go on the offense. And it says this, as I set out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, listen to me, Judah and the people of Jerusalem have faith in your Lord, your God, and you will be upheld, have faith in his prophets and you will be successful. Watch this. After consulting the people, Jehoshaphat appointed men to sing to the Lord and to praise him for the splendor of his holiness as they went out ahead of the army. Now time out and think about this. Okay. They're going into battle. They're going to fight the vast army, but who goes first? The worship team. Who goes first? The singers. Who goes first? The instruments. Who goes first? The weapons, the things that look physically, we'd say this will win the war. No. What happens 
is they send out the worship team in front of all the artillery, in front of all the weapons to enter to battle first. And what do they do when they get there? Watch this, finish it. He says, as they went out ahead of the army, they're saying, give thanks to the Lord for his love endures forever. In other words, what these guys are doing is they're responding to what was already been done. These guys were worshiping. They're responding to the promises of God. Where if you think back to Israel's history, the reason these guys were doing this, because they were going back into their history. They were going, you know what got us here was God. What set us free from Egypt was the 10 plagues. Listen to me, we didn't do the 10 plagues. God did the 10 plagues. And then once Pharaoh released us and we got stuck at the Red Sea, what happened at the Red Sea? Did we part the Red Sea? No, God parted the Red Sea. And then when we were up against giants in this city called Jericho against walled cities after 40 years of being in the wilderness, only have rocks and bows to defeat a huge army, then what did we do? We walked around a city and worshiped God and who caved in the city? God did. Who won the battle for us? God did. Who went on our behalf? God did. And what we have to understand as Christians is that if you want God to intervene, so if you look at these stories and you're like, man, that would be awesome if like, my back's against the wall and I need God's activity, what do I do? <laughs> look back in faith and respond to what God's already done for you and what has he done? Listen to me, if you're a Christian, you know what's already been done? forgiveness of sins. You know what's already been done, done? If you've put your faith in Jesus, okay, you've been brought into the family of God. What's already been done is that God is your father and his promise is to be with you in whatever circumstance you're in. And so, yeah, you might be dealing with a loss and you might be dealing with anxiety. Man, you might be dealing with depression you might be dealing with financial problems. Heck, you might be dealing with some thoughts in your mind you never thought you would think. And what do we do to attack those thoughts in our minds? Well, what scripture would say is we worship. We worship. We respond that when Jesus was on the cross, dying for us and he put his head down and said, it is finished. Listen to me, at that moment, he became Lord over the earth, Lord over our lives, Lord over all of heaven, and his promises are to be with you in whatever you're worried about. But what soothes the mind, what overcomes the worry, is worship. It's worship. It's us saying, I'm not worthy. It's us maybe singing a song. It's us saying my life is gonna reflect this faith journey that I might not be able to see how we're gonna win the army. I'm not gonna see how we're gonna beat the, the enemy. But you know what, it's God's battle, it's his way. And until God does it, I'm gonna worship in the moment. And so here's how we're gonna end. Is we're gonna have some songs come. So yeah, I know it can be kind of weird because you're watching online and they can be kind of, kind of different. But what we're going to do is we're going to do our very best to lead you into worship. And yeah, we're going to have some songs. Okay, but understand, worship is not a song. It is a lifestyle. It's us having faith. And sometimes music helps with that. And so what I want to challenge you to is maybe you've never really worshiped before. Maybe when the music's come on in church, you've just kind of listened and, and, and not really engaged. Okay, but what I want to challenge you to do is I want you to engage in worship for the rest of our morning. Or maybe you're watching in the afternoon, maybe you're walking in a coffee shop. Listen to me, I want you to just listen to the music. Maybe read the words. If you're not comfortable singing, read the words, but take it in. And here's what I want you to do is I want you to reflect on the truth of the words coming into our hearts. And I want you to respond in worship. Right? 
Thank God for what he's done. Thank God for the forgiveness of sins. Thank God for laying his life down and giving Jesus to sacrifice for us. And here's what I want you to do is as you move through the next few minutes, here's what you'll find is that whatever you're worried about today will be overcome with worship. Whatever your thoughts are that are racing through your mind, like what's keeping you up at night, when you're in your bed and you set that thing, right? Like, what do you do, man? I'm telling you, those thoughts, those things, worship overpowers worry every time. And what I want you to do is interact with a living God today. I know it can be a risk, but I just want you to take, like, we're going to just have two, three songs here. And the point of this is for you just to say, hey, I'm going to reflect on this. I'm going to worship God and just see what he does to your thoughts. I promise that your worship will overpower the worry every time. And if you bow your heads and pray, God, as we enter into these next couple moments, <clears throat> God, there's some people that hear worship and they're there. They're, they're, yes, I needed this. There are other people that are going, man, I don't, I don't know if God could love me or maybe I've never, never actually engaged my heart and my spirit in worship. God, wherever we're at, Here's my hope and prayer, God, that you would open our hearts to you. God, worship is a powerful thing. Worship through song is a thing the church has done through the generations because it does something to our minds and our souls. So God, as we enter into these next couple of moments, God, I pray that there would be no distractions. God, I pray that there would be open hearts. And God, more than anything, I pray that your spirit would move in the hearts of your people to ease the worry in whatever is in their mind. In your name we pray. Amen.
Well, I don't know what you did for the last couple minutes, but I hope that you open your heart to the things of God. I really do. But I also want you to know that worship doesn't stop here. Just because the music ends, just because the video ends, listen to me, you have an opportunity to worship God every single day. Listen to me, it doesn't have to be through music. Maybe it's through reading your Bible. Maybe it is through prayer. Maybe it is through acts of kindness. Maybe it is just turning your radio up, get find us some worship music on Spotify or Apple Music and just cranking that thing up to 11. But here's what I want you to know is in the moments where you're worried, again, we're not as in control as we think we are, but in the moments you're worried, hear me my challenge. Have your faith fueled by worship. By worship. Reflect on all that God's done for you before. Worship Him and thank Him and respond to those good acts because it'll move you forward through the worry. I love you guys. We'll see you next week.